Hello everyone and welcome back to Basic Photoshop Tutorials. This week we're going to be putting a, a label on a bottle, in this case a beer label on a beer bottle. Now I've just grabbed this beer bottle from Stock Exchange, you can do so as well. I'll have a link up in the, in the right side over here um, once the video is finished so you can grab this, uh, this bottle if you want. Okay, getting to it, um, make sure you obviously have a label to put on it. In this case, my label is uh, one I've created, and, it's, and you'll notice that it's, it's flat. It's, uh, it's not, there's no texture to it, it's just a flat label um, waiting to be put on a bottle. So we're just going to resize the, the label, and that's just simply done by selecting your Move tool. I'm going to hold Shift and Alt and bring it down to the size I want to be put on this label. That looks pretty good right about there and then go ahead and make sure it's centered on your bottle. If you don't uh, um, have a, uh, your rulers up, just make sure you have the uh, snap or snap to on your uh, selected, that way it'll snap to the middle for you. Okay, so now that our label is in position, what we want to do is we want to warp the label so that it looks like it's actually on the bottle. And that's simply done by going to Edit, Transform, and warp. Now you want to make sure your label isn't uh, is already rasterized in this case, um, and that it's not vector style still. Uh, that otherwise you won't be able to use this warp tool. So now that we have the warp selected, we're going to grab these these corner or um, these side uh, uh, little circles, and we're just going to pull them in. And you want to make sure you uh, don't go up and down. You want to make sure you stay as level as possible. Try to keep that line straight as possible, and don't go all the way and leave a little bit of edge around it. Uh, uh, around the label, okay? And I'll show you why in a minute. And again, we're going to do the same on this side, keeping it as straight as possible, and we're not going all the way in, but trying to keep the top and the bottom consistent, if, if you can, okay? There are other ways using rulers and whatnot to do it properly. Uh, in this case, I'm just doing it really quickly. So, and again, do the same on the left side. Again, not bringing it all the way in, but trying to keep it consistent on the top and the bottom. And that looks pretty good right there. Just hit OK. And you know, the label already is starting to wrap around the bottle. Uh, but it's still, it's still too much uh, uh, you know, hanging over the edge. And that's just, we're just going to get rid of that. It's really easy to do. We're just going to hold Control and left click on the bottle layer. And again, that brings up the marquee around the bottle. Go to fil uh, Select and then Select Inverse. And that selects everything outside of the bottle. And with the layer, uh, the label layer selected, in this case mine is called hops for some reason. With the layer layer, uh, label layer selected, just hit delete. Okay, and obviously, and control D. And obviously what that did is it gets rid of the, the, the label that's sticking over the side. So now it actually looks like it's wrapping around that bottle. It's got a little bit of a, a contour to it in this area here, and yet the label stays consistent. Um, we're going to take it a step further. Obviously, it's wrapping around, but it still doesn't look realistic. So to make it look a little more realistic, go ahead and right-click and blending options on your label. I'm bringing up the blending options here. We're going to go to gradient, and we're going to select our angle at 180 or 0. It's up to you. It doesn't really matter. And we're going to choose our gradient editor, and we're just going to bring the top right um, opacity stop here to the middle at 50. And we're going to bring its transparency, or sorry, opacity all the way down to zero so that it's transparent. And then we're going to go ahead and click uh, just above the gradient here so that we create another uh, opacity stop. And we're just going to make that 100. Okay, and its location is going to be 100 as well. And if you have a black and white, we're going to change the white so that it is black as well. So we want, we want, uh, 100% opacity, transparent, 100%, and on the bottom we want black to black with the transparent in the middle, keeping everything where it is. And just hit OK. And obviously what it's doing now is it's showing a bit of a shadow on the side. That's, that's exactly what we want, but we don't want it to be so distinct. We want to bring down the opacity in this case to a, to a spot where it's comfortable, comfortable for you so that it looks good for, to you. And again, you can change the scale on this if you want and just play around the options so that it looks best to you. But uh, that looks pretty good right there. Actually, I'm going to bring down the opacity just a little more. Okay, that looks pretty good there, and hit OK. So right there, we have a label on a bottle. It's got a bit of a shadow, a little bit of a realistic effect. Um, and that's pretty much where we could leave it. But I want to take it a step further. Uh, and a lot of be this beer bottle, in this case, doesn't really have the sweat uh, drops or the wet drops or whatever you want to call them. 
that most bottles already have on them. So let's just pretend there's some wet drops on this bottle. Now I want to put wet drops on the the label itself. So we want to add a texture to that label. So we're going to do that by just go to Google and search uh, beer bottle texture, glass, or whatever, and pull up a wet something like this. I'll have a link to this as well in the right side. Um, just copy that out of your browser and paste it as a new layer um, into your Photoshop file. Okay, so obviously we've pasted that in and you can see it there. Bring it up so it's above your label. Okay, and just make sure that you bring the size down. So what we're going to do is, is, in this case I'm going to turn this one actually. We're going to size it so it's just covering the label itself. And and you want to try to get the drops uh, realistic. You don't want huge drops or really small ones. You try to get them to where they look real and they look like they're supposed to be um, on that label. And then once you've got it to where you want it, just hit the OK button up the top here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, control left click on our label. That What that does is sets up a marquee around our label. We're going to go to select inverse. Everything outside of that label now is selected. With the wet drop selected, just hit delete. And that's just what we did before. It just gets rid of the excess. Hit Control D to get rid of our marquee. Now, we don't want it to be purple. So we're going to go with our wet drop selected. Go to Image, Adjustments, and Desaturate. And again, that gives it to the desaturated mode, which is usually black and white, and obviously black and white. Um, now what we're going to do is, we, obviously, we don't want it to be so distinct. We want it to, be look, we want it to look like it's on the label. So we're going to choose our layer options here and simply just click Overlay. Now it still it still looks really good. The the wet drops though are still a little distinct, and that's easy to get rid of. With your wet drop selected, your wet drop layer, just uh, bring down the opacity to where you feel it is comfortable for you, and I think that that looks pretty good to me. So that's that's pretty much all there is to putting a label on um, a beer bottle. And uh, I'm going to take it even a step further here. You know what? I've got a label already set. Um, th obviously, this is not a real label. It's just a rectangle I drew using a shape, and I, I rasterized the layer. And these, the top, the neck at the top is a little different. We're going to do, do the same technique, but we're changing the warp. So we're going to go to Edit, Transform, and Warp. Now instead of grabbing the right and left sides, we're going to grab the top and bottom. Grabbing the top, we want to pull it down so that it's, again, it's straight and not too far down, but we're going to start a little bit of a curve at the top. You'll see that. And you do the same on the right side. Try to keep it consistent. And that's not very consistent. But we're going to try to keep it as close to the left as possible. And on the bottom, we're doing the same thing. We're not bringing it up, but we're bringing it down. So try to keep your, your, your angle the exactly the same if, if you can. So you'll notice that we now have a, a swooshing effect. It's sort of on an angle here. And it's in an arch. And just make sure that's centered and where you want it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to control click the bottle layer again. We're going to select inverse. We've done this again before. And we're just going to, with our, with our label selected, hit delete. And then hit control D and that gets rid of it. So there we go. And you can go ahead and do the same things with the shading and the wet drops. You can do the same things on the top uh, label or whatever it is you put at the top. So that's it. There, it looks pretty good. We got the label on our beer bottles, our labels on our beer bottle, and uh, the wet drops as well with the texture and the shadowing. So uh, I'm going to leave it there. and. Uh, I know I haven't had some videos as of late, but uh, I am moving uh, soon, and I'm also changing jobs soon, so I'm going to try to have one more uh, by the end of the month for you guys, but it's really hectic for me. But again, if you have any questions or concerns, um, I've already helped some people with assignments um, that they've had some questions about, so just throw me a, a, an email on YouTube, and uh, I'll get to it as quickly as possible. Thanks again.